Hello, everybody. I would just like to pray with you first before I get into the word of God today. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we come before you right now. May you open up our hearts and look like a fire. Father God, may you can consume us. May you consume us. May you take over this session. May you speak through me, Holy Spirit. Lord God, I want to thank you that you're going to inspire us, even with a timely word. I thank you, I honor you, and I love you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Hello, everybody. I greet you all in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. First of all, I'd like to honor and acknowledge my mentor, my teacher, my role model, and my amazing father, Apostle Samuel Tapua Manika, who has entrusted me with this incredible opportunity and, and given me this platform to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. A special mention to my wonderful and beautiful mother, Pastor Maureen Manika, who has taught me all the fundamentals of what it means to be a virtuous woman. I love both of you very, very much, and I thank God for you. I am your child, and I am so grateful for the continued love and support which has helped me to get to be where I am today. The title of my message is The Paradigm Shift. The Paradigm Shift. So a few months ago, I came across a beautiful, 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 beautiful backyard garden on Instagram. It was so incredible, and the design concept was out of this world. There were other pictures attached to the initial post, so I began to slide across in hopes to see the other pictures, assuming that they would showcase a more detailed presentation of the garden. But much to my surprise, I realized that the garden was actually a renovated garden, and it looked... And initially, it looked nothing like the first picture that had caught my attention. From the previous setup of the garden, it looked neglected, it was dirty, it was inhabitable. I concluded that nobody wanted to sit there or dare look at it as I pondered on this horrific presentation of the garden. I started to process the fact that the garden also didn't look like that when the house was initially built and brand new. Even though once upon a time the garden was decent, when the new homeowners of the house decided to revamp and renovate it, it looked 10 times better than its original concept when it was still a decent backyard garden. And so in looking at all of this and in, and in pondering upon all of these thought processes and looking at its final concept and renovation and it being revamped and then also looking at its terrible, beaten down, rusty, decayed form and also thinking back to the fact that way before that it was looking much better, I was able to conclude that the rightful homeowner had finally moved into this house and its backyard garden, which had so much potential from the very beginning, was simply in the wrong hands before. At this very moment, yes, on Instagram, the Holy Spirit began to minister to me about people and the processes, experiences, and seasons that we go through in life. For starters, when we come into this world and we are yet to encounter Jesus Christ and his transformative power thereof, which actually takes us and puts us in a space that we were originally meant to be in, we are ordinary. There's nothing fancy about us. There's nothing unique about us. There's nothing exciting about us. We are ordinary. We are purposeless. Without meaning, identity, we lack substance and definition. That is what we look like. We are nothing fancy, nothing to write home about. But the devil knows that that is not true. And so before the gospel reaches us, before the word touches our hearts, he devises plans and exposes us to different types of people, to different types of things, to different types of pains, to different types of traumas. Day after day after day after day, we find ourselves constantly decaying like this garden, which was exposed to the wrong homeowners time and time again. We are losing color. We are losing value because the devil currently has the upper hand and he takes control of your life. But he doesn't want to transform us. Instead, he takes us from being ordinary, like what the garden looked like initially when it was built, to becoming ugly slowly losing personality, life, purpose, and eventually taking the form 
of the decayed garden that I saw on Instagram. And through his influence, when we have said all the lies, indulged in all the seven sins, when, it, we, when we have been exposed to all the wrong crowds and potential partners, when he has poisoned our minds with the negative words and movies and all these different forms of profane entertainment, when he has taken away our dignity and our innocence and he has made us prostitute ourselves using our talents and our gifts for the kingdom of darkness, he leaves. He doesn't want you anymore. He forsakes us. He doesn't want to have anything to do with us because that special seed that was inside of you, he has already used it for his purposes and his only thought process, his only agenda, as the word of God tells us, is to steal, kill, and destroy. And because now we are a decayed garden, there is nothing left to use. There is nothing left to manipulate. There is nothing left to control. There is nothing left to cherish. But then as we prepare to expire in that current state of rust and dirt and dysfunction and filth, Jesus comes and ministers to us and he takes us through a paradigm shift. In that form, with all that dysfunction, Jesus doesn't pay attention to that. Jesus doesn't pay attention to that because he knows who you were really meant to be. He knows that you are not a decayed garden, but you have become a decayed garden as a result of the experiences that you have been through and all the different homeowners in the form of idols and all these wrong people that were sent by the enemy to live in you, to, to be inside of your body. But Jesus doesn't look at that. Jesus doesn't look at the random outdoor storage space, which is pot wood and pot brick. Jesus doesn't waste time on the cracked gray bucket with grass stuffed inside. Jesus doesn't look at the random old black suitcase in the center of this tiny backyard decaying garden amidst all the strange expired and the shattered items. He is not bothered by that. Do you know why Jesus is not bothered by that? Because Jesus knows who you really are and what you are truly capable of. God is not going to allow you to decay any further. And we thank God for the Levites conference because he has come to take you through a paradigm shift. I have come to tell you that no matter what you have been through, no matter what you have been doing, every single activity that you partook of under the sun, that has put filth on your name, that has made you look like some type of dirty rag. We are about to deal with that in Jesus' name because he has come to take you through a paradigm shift. God is not going to allow you to decay any longer and any more than what you have become. He has come to take you through a paradigm shift and by his transformative power, not only are we to be restored, but we are going to look better than the previous presentation that we were before before we even decayed, Jesus has, put, has come to put you into your original shape. And the first thing that he starts off with is dealing with your mindset, which is why today I want to talk to you about the paradigm shift. Because you cannot build an ark when you haven't gone through a paradigm shift. You cannot become a multimillionaire when you have not gone through a paradigm shift. You cannot start a business when you have not gone through a paradigm shift. You cannot even graduate when you have not gone through a paradigm shift. You cannot break generational curses if you have not gone through a paradigm shift. And so that's the first thing he's going to come and deal with with you. Genesis, Jeremiah 1 verse 5 says, I knew you before I formed you in your mother's womb. Before you were born, I set you apart and anointed you as my prophet to the nations. While you were watching this, I want you to open this scripture and where it says, I knew you. I want you to put your name there. I know I knew you before I formed you in your mother's womb. I know I knew you before you were formed in your mother's womb. And I set you apart and write whatever purpose you believe God has given you. Continually confess this on your life. Continually confess this on your life. Jesus is not moved by the devil. He came to remove the devil and make it clear about who the real boss is. We are not intimidated by the forces of darkness. We are not 
ignorant of the devil's devices. We have overcome by the power of Jesus. And so because the devil knows that Jesus won the victory a long time ago, he is trying to take 18 years of your life. He is trying to take away the first 22 years of your life. He's trying to take away the first 30 years of your life because he knows that the moment Jesus comes and ministers to you and takes you through a paradigm shift, you will be unstoppable because he knows that the moment that Jesus ministers to you and takes you through a paradigm shift, you will be invincible. He knows that the moment that Jesus comes and ministers to you, you will become victorious. So the devil is on a mission to turn you into a decaying garden before you have that encounter with Jesus Christ. I have used this idea of a newly renovated, once upon a time decaying garden as a metaphoric expression of our bodies, which are ideally meant to be temples of the Lord, of which the mind is meant to be fully subservient to the word of God and to Christ in order for us to be purposeful. You see, before Christ, we can have all these different homeowners come and reside, all these different individuals, families, and couples in the form of idols and demonic influences, occupying our bodies, controlling our minds, pushing us further away from his purposes each day and eating us away with sin. But all of that is about to end in Jesus' name because there is a paradigm shift. In the year of the Gopher Word anointing, there is a shift coming your way because we have to build an ark. LWCI Gweru Tabernacle is waiting. There are some nations that are waiting. There are some people that are waiting. There are some families that are waiting. So I have to go through a paradigm shift. My family has to be delivered. Generational curses have to be broken. So there is a paradigm shift that needs to take place in the name of Jesus. I speak that into your life right now. I decree and declare that every single thing that was holding you captive is broken in Jesus' name because I need to go through a paradigm shift. I have been equipped. I have been anointed. But there have been these idols and these demonic forces that have been holding me captive, that have been making me not able to flow or function to my fullest capacity. But Jesus died and rose again. He overcame the grave. Not even death could hold him down. Jesus came so that we could have life and not just life, but life in abundance. So I don't only want to live. I don't only want to survive, but I want to thrive. I want to thrive in Christ. I want to win in Christ, but I can only do that if I go through a paradigm shift. I can only do that if I go through a paradigm shift. Galatians 2 verse 20 he says, my old self has been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. So I live in this earthly body by trusting in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself to me. He gave himself for me, gave himself for me. Jesus comes in and he transforms us. You should stop allowing the devil to guilt trip you about your mistakes. We do not come to the throne of grace. We do not enter into his holies of holies. We do not go to church so that we can have a testimony of who was redeemed the most. What I want to focus on is building. I'm not in a competition about how much sin I had before or how much sin you had before. I am, I am trying. I am pressing on towards the mark. I am pressing on toward the mark, but I can only do it successfully if I go through a paradigm shift because Jesus has transformed me and he has set a standard for me. He has set a standard for me and God will never give me something that I cannot achieve. He knows that I am well equipped. He knows that we are well equipped. He knows that we've got all the resources. He said to Moses, what is that in your hand? And so I'm telling you today that you have to go through this par paradigm shift because you were born with purpose. You were born with an agenda 
agenda. You were born, you were born, you were born to set people free, to be an answer to your community, to be an answer in your family, to make kingdom impact, kingdom impact, whether it be in the corporate space, whether it be in the academic space, our purpose begins to show, our purpose now must show, our manners must now evolve, our gifts and talents must be nourished, our gifts and talents must be nourished because we are going through a paradigm shift. I decree and declare in the name of Jesus that God's plans will prevail. God's plans will prevail. God's plans will prevail because we're in the year of the God forward anointing and so a paradigm shift is coming your way. What is 18 years wasted to a lifetime with Jesus? What is 20 years wasted to a lifetime with Jesus? Levites, living light. Jesus is saying to us tonight, stop thinking about the past. Live in the present and walk in the future. Amen. Jesus is saying to us tonight, I'm not looking at your decay. I'm not looking at your dirt. I'm not looking at your rust like that decayed garden. I'm not paying attention to your disorder and your dysfunction. Yes, I can see it's there. Jesus knows. He knows that you have been abused and you abused. <laughs> He knows that you have lied and you have been lied to. He knows that you have betrayed and you have been betrayed. He can see it and he doesn't approve of it. He doesn't like it. He knows that it's not representing the kingdom. He knows that it's disgraceful and shameful. He knows that it's pathetic. But he can see something bigger than that in you. He can see something bigger than that in you. He is looking at a contemporary, upmarket, sophisticated backyard garden in the middle of an ordinary middle-class neighborhood. But because of the paradigm shift, <laughs> he is about to put you through <laughs> to a new place. <laughs> he is about to put you through to a new place. Jesus is not looking at that. He is looking at renovating you. He is looking at revamping you. This means we are taking everything down first. We are destroying every altar. We are destroying every idol. We are destroying every wicked thought and every detestable action. We are shifting. We are shifting. We are moving. We are rising from glory to glory. From glory to glory. I am looking at. I feel the spirit of the Lord. And he is saying, I am looking at putting some well-fitting brand new outdoor living furniture. I am looking at some brand new white tiling. I am looking at some new and durable fencing. That way you can set all the right boundaries this time. You cannot be deceived this time. I am placing a warm heater for cooler days <laughs> so that in the cold world, in this cold world that you're entering into, you're going to have a beautiful, warm and kind heart and a clean heart that will minister to the nations. God is saying, I am shifting you. I am shifting you. I am taking you through a paradigm shift in the midst of that dysfunction with all of that disorder and messiness. I am shifting you because there is an ark to build. We are in the last days. So he has to shift us because there is an ark to build. He has to shift us because we're under the Gophawood anointing. He has to shift us because this is the year of honoring God and serving him. He has to shift us. He has to shift us. God doesn't see your mess. God sees a Joshua generation who is anointed to reign. God sees an instrument of his glory. God sees someone who can get up, get there, and stay there. God sees someone who needs strategic partnering so that they can get to their destiny. God sees someone who, because of their previous life of lies, deceit, and cheating, is discerning enough to be aware of false prophets. God sees someone who knows what it's like to have every kind of thing thrown at them to lose their family, to lose their confidence, to lose their self-esteem, to lose everything that they could hold on to. And as a result, they know how to survive the counter attack. God sees someone who has been set apart and once transformed and once transformed because they were originally chosen to be a part of a chosen remnant. They will successfully walk in the supernatural. God doesn't care how long you were in the devil's playground for, bec for because he is now preparing you for 70 years, preparing for eternity. So that's why I said 18 years doesn't matter. 20 years wasted doesn't matter. 30 years doesn't matter. Levites, I'm saying that it's just now time for you to make a decision and to walk in the supernatural. To walk 
after going through a paradigm shift, God is so great. He is the king of kings. God is proud of you because you have had the discipline. For those that were already going through the paradigm shift, I know that it's been hard. I know that your flesh and your spirit have been in constant battle. Who is going to subdue to who? Who is going to listen to who? Because my spirit is saying I love Jesus, but my flesh is pulling me back. And you've been in this battle. And God has been saying that I'm proud of you because you've been fighting already. But let me take over and continue to take you through this paradigm shift. You don't have to do it by yourself. You don't have to prove anything to anybody. We don't have to prove anything to anybody. Jesus came for you. He came for me. He came for us to make you a better version of yourself. So you sit down and do those Bible study for home cell groups so that you can live life with understanding. Once he takes you through this paradigm shift, he knows, he understands, he is aware that you will be able to eliminate every single impossibility list that you had. We become unstoppable. This shift is important because we have an ark to build. You see, Genesis 6 verse 9 says, this is the account of Noah and his family. Noah was a righteous man, the only blameless person living on earth. At the time, he walked in close fellowship with God. God is always ready to select people from within the crowd who will build an ark. In these last days, he even made us a promise. He said that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. So there's not only one Noah anymore. There are many of us. There are many Noahs that have to rise. There are many Noahs who have to be willing to be uncool at school, who, who have to be willing to not fit into the trends, not fit into the current fashionable state of things. I'm, are you willing? Are we willing to be righteous? Am I willing to be blameless in the sight of the Lord? Apostle Samuel Tapua Manika said at the 2020 crossover night, he said, he said that right, being righteous is not what people usually think. It means to be in right standing with God. Being righteous means to be in right standing with God in the place that God has put me, in the environment that God has put me, in the community that God has put me, in the family that God has put me. Am I in right standing with God? Because God is about to give some people some unique assignments, things that have never been seen on earth manifesting before. It's all possible because all part of his agenda is that he wants to win as many souls to his kingdom before his return. God wants to do something in us as his children. He wants to take us into spaces that we have never seen before. He wants to do something that no eye has seen, no ear has heard ever before. But are we willing to be blameless and righteous in the sight of the Lord? Are we willing to stand out? Because mind you, there had never been such a thing as an ark built before. There had never been an ark in the word of God. If we look at it properly, an ark is basically the first ship that was ever built and it never existed before. It was something that had never been done before. I am telling you that when you choose to stand, when you choose to stand on God's word, he breathes these life-changing ideas into you that people have just never seen before because I have to build an ark, not only for me, but for my family, not only for me, but for my family. Your paradigm shift is not just for you. There is some, there is a whole group of people. There is a whole group of people that is waiting for you to go through a paradigm shift. There is a whole community of people that is relying on you to go through a paradigm shift so that you can be the light in the darkness in your workplace, so that you can be the light in the darkness at your church. During this COVID-19, you are meant to be a light in the darkness. And so when I look at eliminating your impossibility list, this incredible book by our father, Apostle Samuel Tapua Manika, I am going to read for you this powerful statement on pages 23 
on pages 23, chapter 3, smaller minds versus the mind of Christ. He says in 1 Corinthians 2, verse 16, for who hath known the mind of God that he may instruct him, but we have the mind of Christ. Isaiah 55, verse 8 to 9, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are my ways your ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so my ways are higher than your ways and my thoughts your thoughts. To effectively and consistently live a life of achieving the impossible, it is important to understand that we cannot do it while thinking and operating at an ordinary human level. We have to develop a, const, a completely different way of looking at things. We are human and normally we cannot function or go beyond our personal experiences or the experiences of those around us or those who look up to us. Change of thinking, the mind of Christ versus smaller minds. I'm a bit further down, verse 24 it says, the Lord Jesus wants us to be like him. I have come to tell you that Jesus did not only come so that your life could be changed, he has come so that you can adopt his mind, so that you can have the mind of Christ in everything that you do, so that you can win and excel because you have gone through a paradigm shift and adopted the mind of Christ. He says, every person out ultimately must become, every person ultimately becomes a byproduct of their thinking. Proverbs 23 verse 7 says, for as a man thinketh in his heart, so he's, is he. And so because over time, ever since you were a, a little girl, ever since you were a little boy, your mind has been molded by the adolescent abuse that you were exposed to. I don't know who took advantage of you. I don't know who took advantage of you. I don't know what you experienced. I don't know the negative things that were said upon your life. I don't know what traumas you had to see your parents endure, but God wants to take you through a paradigm shift because he knows that the paradigms that you have formed in your mind are toxic. They are toxic and they won't get us anywhere in life. They are toxic and they won't change us in any kind of way. So God wants to take us through a paradigm shift. We have to change the way that we think, but in changing the way that we think, our minds have to submit to the word of God. So I ask you again, what is a paradigm shift? Because somebody might be watching. They're like, sis, you've been going on about this paradigm shift. I don't know. I don't read. I don't, you know, I'm not into that stuff. I don't know what a paradigm shift is. And so a paradigm shift, for those who really want to know, is a fundamental change. It's a fundamental change in approach or underlying assumptions. But then... Paradigm shift is actually two words. So the reason why we have to go through a paradigm shift is because a paradigm are the perceptions of the way things are in accordance to our, our minds as individuals. You see, and what I find to be so interesting is that they are usually inaccurate and incomplete because they are based on what we have been through. They are based on what we have been through. So if I struggled a lot constantly through, through, through school and through um, education, for example, I can start to believe that there is no point in me learning. I can start to believe that there's no point in me learning. If I am molested as a young lady or as a young man growing up, I can start to have a very unhealthy view of the opposite sex in line with whichever gender I am. And so they are off mark because they create limitations in our ability to thrive and to win and to merge and to have successful relationships even with people and with God. And they, they make us not look at details because they lead us to having a more emotional response to what we are, to what we are thinking as a result of the trauma or the experience that we faced. And so we all have paradigms. I'm sorry to break it to you might be looking like, no, I think it's just you. I know I think it's just some of the youths there who are watching. We all have paradigms. We all have paradigms about people, about ourselves, about our life, about our families, and all these different things that have affected our progress. And so at this moment, I would like us to take time to introspect and think. I just want you to take out a notebook or, or whatever else you'll be holding. And, and the most important thing, I just, I just want you to ask yourself some of these questions. What is it that has been preventing you from shifting? What paradigm do you have in your mind? What paradigms do we have in our minds that has, have prevented us from shifting? For starters, is it our per perceived level of intelligence? 
Did you grow up people telling you that you weren't smart, that you weren't good enough, that you'll never excel? Is it that? Is it your perceived level of intelligence? Is it your background? Every time you think about the kind of house that you grew up in and, and, and what, you, what you saw happening with your mom and your dad or, or everything like that, is, is it that? Is it your physical features? Did you grow up with low self-esteem, unsure of yourself, lacking self-assuredness? Is it the hurtful words or the abuse that you endured that kept rewinding in your mind every time you were trying to do something, every time you were trying to, to hop, to skip, to jump, to run? You just remembered that word. You just remembered what your grandmother said to you when she was angry. You just remembered. Is it growing up with lack? that makes you struggle to have a paradigm shift. You, you can't even give into the house of the Lord because you're so afraid to be poor again or to struggle again. What, what was it? Was it segregation and judgment? Did you grow up being judged and misunderstood and condemned for all the type of, for things that you didn't even do? I've come to tell you that your story is valid. Your pain is valid. But at the same time, I want you to know that your pain and your sad story can't take you through a paradigm shift. I am sorry. On behalf of whoever did that, on behalf of whoever made you feel like that, I apologize. But I have come to tell you that we cannot hold on to those weights because they do not help us to launch. They do not help us to go through the paradigm shift. Jesus overcame the world and everything in it. He paid the ultimate price for you to be set free, to be relieved of all of those traumas. Allow him to transform your mind. We must allow him to transform our mind. We must allow him to transform us, take us through a paradigm shift. When I was doing this sermon, I felt in my spirit that at times as people, we are afraid even to go through a paradigm shift because we think that it's just another process of dream selling. We are so used sometimes to being lied to by so many different facets of our lives. We have been lied to by family members. We have been lied to by teachers. We have been lied to by our community community. We don't even want to trust in God and go through the paradigm shift because we think it's going to be another dream seller and a lie. But it's different this time because Jesus overcame the world and everything in it. That's what I keep on feeling, that you need to understand that he is the name above every name. He is the king of kings. He is higher than any principality and power, any force of darkness. He overcame it all. We have to reprogram. We have to reprogram and stop living to survive but start living to thrive but we can only live to thrive when we intentionally go through a paradigm shift God is putting you through a paradigm shift because he's preparing us for big and better things for mighty and greater things the Holy Spirit is breathing new ideas he's breathing life he's setting people apart because from the onset you were part of a chosen remnant. You didn't know it, but you were part of a chosen remnant. You were set apart, and there is nothing that can stand in your way anymore. And so I want to ask you one more time, as I start to conclude, I say again, what is a paradigm shift? For starters, it's been so rest assured in God that no matter how corrupt, senseless, cruel, and insensitive people decide to be, like a madman, no one made the decision to be blameless and righteous and walk in close fellowship with God to the extent that God gave him a unique type of wood known as gopher wood. Apostle told us that gopher wood doesn't even exist. When you look it up in the dictionary, it doesn't even exist. It's a unique type of wood and it's very rare to find. People have likened it to a lot of different types of things, but they've never been able to find the actual gopher wood. And this is what Noah was given by God to build an ark that had never existed before. That is a paradigm shift shift, that I can end up building something that has never been built before. You find that in Genesis 6 verse 9 to 18. I ask you, what is a paradigm shift? It is God picking out a man named Abraham because of his faith and, and changing it to Abraham, telling him to leave his country and go to a place he has never been before, only to make him a great nation, a blessed and famous man, a multifaceted entrepreneur, an advisor, a friend of God, a man of God, a father of faith, the father of 
Isaac at 99 years of age, God places his shield of protection upon him. You find this in Genesis 12 verse 1 to 7. What is a paradigm shift? It is having to fight your whole life. It is having to fight your whole life and being reliant on family members like your mother. And then at some point, God forces you to grow a backbone and you find yourself sleeping on a rock and using it as a pillow. Jacob, your name is not even Jacob. Your name is Israel, for you are a great nation. You are a great nation. You are a great nation. You are an established front. Your name was not even Jacob in the first place. You find that in Genesis 28, verse 10 to 16. What is a paradigm shift? It is growing up as one of the last born kids, tending to your father's flock, Knowing that there is possibly nothing else, there's nothing else for me except probably to just continue tending to my father's sheep. But however, God keeps giving you these dreams. He keeps giving you these dreams. You hold on to these dreams. You believe in these dreams. As a result of these dreams, you hold yourself accountable. You say no to Potiphar's wife. You still serve humbly and willingly even in prison. Yes, that's who you are, Joseph. Do you know that, Joseph, you are not a shepherd boy. You are not meant to be watching your shepherd, your father's flock. You are the vizier of Egypt. You are not a shepherd boy. You are a prime minister in a foreign land. You find that in Genesis 41 verse 37 to 45. What is a paradigm shift? I need to give you at least five examples so that you ingrain it into your head because my agenda is that I want you to go to a paradigm shift without having any excuses anymore knowing that God can do all things. God can change your life. God will make you great. And so a paradigm shift, it is being born to a God-fearing Hebrew family and finding favor in the Lord's sight and being preserved by being transported to Pharaoh's palace as a baby in a basket in water along the Nile River. And then you grow up with princely privileges and being an Egyptian is all you've ever known. But at some point, Moses killed an Egyptian because he, he was never one of them. And he didn't even know why he did it, but his purpose was screaming. His purpose was screaming and a shift was taking place. After years in the desert, 80 years of age, God made him realize that those princely privileges, they weren't for nothing. The first class education he received wasn't for nothing. His interaction with kings and with queens Queens, from all of these sophisticated and, and other developed nations and countries and, and whatever. It wasn't just for fun. It wasn't for him to climb up Egyptian ranks. It wasn't for him to climb up Egyptian structures. It wasn't for him to remain royal in Egypt. It was for him to break down the core of the Egyptians, of the demon-infested place that had tormented God people, God's people, and to set the Israelites free by the power of God. You find that in Exodus. 3, verse 1 to 12. The paradigm shift is Esther, a virgin girl who became a queen that delivered the Jewish nation. The paradigm shift is Ruth, a widower who learned the art of submission and received Boaz as a gift due to her virtue. The paradigm shift is King David, a shepherd who became a man after God's very own heart and a dynamic king. The paradigm shift is the apostles of Jesus Christ who at some point were fishermen and Jesus said, let me make you fishers of men. That is the paradigm shift. I don't know what you are hoping for, but God is taking us through a paradigm shift. I don't know what you are praying for, but God is taking us through a paradigm shift. You are not ordinary. You might have grown up ordinary. You might have grown up average. You might have grown up looked down upon. You might have grown up excused, but there is a paradigm shift taking place. Submit to the God for wood anointing. Let us submit to the God for wood anointing. Let us submit to the God for wood anointing because this is the year for me to finally see the promises of God come manifest in my life. There is a tabernacle that is waiting for us in Gweru, a living word church, Gweru tabernacle, and it's taking shape. But we cannot build it if we don't go through paradigm shift. We cannot build it if we think that it's going to be the same experiences as before. We need to build the tabernacle. We need to build God's place of worship. We need to build God's place of the first of hundreds, the first of thousands, the first of tens of thousands. The most important, most significant thing about the paradigm shift, as I conclude, the most important, most significant thing about the paradigm shift is that it challenges the principle of every negative thing. 
That is what the paradigm shift does. And I want to take you to Ephesians 6 verse 12, New Living Translation, and it says, For we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world, against mighty powers in, the dark, in this dark world, and against evil spirits in the heavenly places. The paradigm shift forces us to challenge every demonic and satanic principle which has been set in place for us not to thrive. That is what I've come to tell you. Jesus came not only so that we could have life, I will say it again, but so that we could have life in abundance. What is that thing that has been stopping us from having life in abundance? What is that thing that has been stopping us from thriving? What is that thing that has been stopping us from running? What is that thing that has been stopping us from winning? That principle, we, are, we have come, we are here to challenge that principle. We are challenging that principle because we have come here to set the pace for many, many years. As a child of God, I am a fourth generation Christian in the Manika lineage. I am a third generation preacher and a second generation walk. What's next? It's a dynasty of grace, but there have been principles. There have been principles that were trying for us to not launch, and they've been defeated time and time and time again. I don't know if you're a first generation Christian, but I've come to tell you that you can take this opportunity. You can take this opportunity to become the first that will set the pace for your lineage, to become the first that will set the pace even for your generation, for your income coming generation. I have come to tell you to create your own established monarch under a God-ordained principle, to establish your own God-ordained monarch established on a godly principle. I'll repeat that one one more time. Create your own God-ordained monarch established on a God-ordained principle, on a salvation principle, on a tithing principle, on a fasting principle, on a praying principle, on a Bible study principle, on a faith principle, on a love principle. It's all possible. It's all possible. If you're willing to go through the paradigm shift, I'm not even worried because I felt that there's some people who are not even going to accept the paradigm shift. And when I was praying, I said, well, Lord, so what are we going to do? Because now we are moving and we are, we're a movement and we want to keep this rolling. And he said, well, I'll take them through a Gideon experience. And so I'm no longer worried because I've come to realize that some of us are gonna go through a Gideon experience. You didn't want to become a mighty hero. You didn't want to know that the Lord is with you. But the angels under the command of the Lord are going to still minister to you and make sure that you win and make sure that you go through that shift because we have been tormented for too long. God is taking us to a paradigm shift. I just want to pray right now in Jesus' name. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I just want to thank you for this paradigm shift. I want to thank you for this word that you have breathed into my spirit, that you have breathed into my heart. I come before you, Lord God, with every single Levite in mind. I don't know what their paradigm shift is going to consist of. But Lord God, we say, let it be done. We say, let it be done. May all the limiting forces, may all the forces of darkness that have been hindering young people, that have been hindering the youths from going through a paradigm shift, may all of those things be broken in Jesus' mighty name. Give us the grace to fight the principle. Give us the grace to challenge the principle. Give us the grace even to break and destroy the principle, the principle of darkness, because we are born of God. We are a seed of glory, and we have been born of God. We have been born of God. And whatever was of us before Christ has been destroyed. It is now out of our sight. I thank you, Lord God, for your love. I thank you, Lord God, for your grace. May you minister to them. May you minister to every young person. May you minister to every young person who's desiring a paradigm shift. I thank you, Jesus. I love you so much. Amen. Amen.